these items here are some of the worst fuel problems that you have to deal with on a boat. Let me show you. One of the worst things that you can have on a boat is when you open up a compartment like this and you can smell straight fuel. So we've either got a problem in here with our pickup or we've got a problem with the fuel sender. So here's our sender, here's our pickup. What I want to do first is go ahead and clean all this stuff up. And then once I get it cleaned off, I want to pull the sender and then we're going to pull the pickup. This is one of the issues with these plastic tanks is over time they will warp and then the middle will kind of concave in and it'll hold a bunch of water on top of the tank like this. Well, now that we have it fairly clean, we have confirmation that the fuel sender was definitely not working. So that's that. I do not think that the fuel sender is what's leaking. I'm pretty sure that this is right here is our problem. So we're going to go ahead and play with this first. And then once we get this done, then we'll move over here to the fuel sender to see what we got going on there. But yeah, definitely the ground is broken on that so that is definitely not working now in order to get this off what we're going to do is go ahead and take that hose clamp off and then we're going to use a utility knife and just cut the fuel line because the fuel line is going to be hard and it's going to be stuck on there to the point where you'll probably just cut your hand if you try and get it off without cutting it so we're just going to cut a slit down it and then cut the end of it off push that off with a screwdriver and then we'll be able to hopefully put some adjustables on this, put a wrench on that and get the fitting out. And then we'll be able to put a socket or something on this to hopefully screw the pickup out of the fuel tank. If not, there might be a problem with this, seeing how corroded it is. Usually it is a problem. And so we're going to have to do some different work on here, but we'll show you that as we get along with the process. Now having a tool like this is super important when doing fuel cinders and stuff like that, because you can put a socket on the end of this or you can put a Phillips tip on the end of that and then it ratchets. So you can get in here and kind of work the nuts and stuff off or the bolts out without having to, cause you can't get a regular screwdriver in there because of how shallow that is. So that's what makes this tool super useful when it comes to working on stuff like this. All right, and now we are to the problem. We've got the hose off, we've got the fitting out. That was pretty simple, just putting the wrench on that one and then the other wrench here. These are usually a three quarter. So now what we've got to do is try and get this one out, but that's where the problem it lies. So this is a new one, brand new. These usually will fit a one and a 16th. Got a six point, this is a one and a 16th. And you can see this fits in there like that and it will be able to hold it so i did bring a one inch because sometimes once they're corroded as bad as this one is that you can't get the one and sixteenths on there without rolling it over really bad so now i'm just going to see see so here's the one inch and that's what fits so the one and sixteenths won't work so we're going to put that on there now the problem is that holding that nut there is kind of the issue so we're gonna see if it'll if it'll break free without holding that, and then if not, then it's a whole other task of trying to get vice grips on there or trying to get a pipe wrench or something else on there to hold that. So we're gonna see what we can do with just this in the socket and see if it'll come free.
well it looks like with the one inch it just rolled over so we're going to go ahead and get a 15 16 and see if that will do it All right, we are very, very fortunate that this was able to break free. So the way we got it, this thing is so corroded that it kept rolling over with the sockets. So then we put the wrench on there like this. And then we just took another wrench to give us some torque to put on it. Let me show you how we did that. With this wrench like that, we took another one like this and then used that to turn it. So now what I want to do, now that we got it cracked about a quarter of a turn, what I want to do is kind of go back and forth. I want to go back and forth with some crawl. So I'm going to take some crawl. I squirt the crawl on there, give me a little bit of lubricant. And now I'm going to tighten it back up. So I'm just going to go, we've got it free, you know, about a quarter of a turn. So I want to tighten it up a quarter turn back it off a quarter turn tighten it a quarter turn back off a quarter turn that way i can get that crawl to work its way down into the threads of this so that way we can hopefully get this out successfully with not having to do any kind of other issues um, this is the absolute worst situation here to deal with a fuel system this is a big pain with these plastic tanks and this kind of nonsense but let's see if we can't get this off without destroying anything It appears that we have another issue because the sender is stuck or the pickup is stuck right here. I can't get it to come out. So there's probably a screen on the bottom of it and I don't want to break that off underneath. So what we're going to have to do is kind of push this down a little bit. I'm going to take the fuel sender out and then put a mirror in there so we can see what it is and hopefully get in here with some grabbers or something, get a hole of it and then cut it, push it down, pull it out through the sender hole. So before we pull a cinder out, I just wanted to point out one thing that you see how the wires are coming out this side of the cinder. Cinders only go in one way. And so whenever we go to put the new cinder in, you notice how the wire is coming out right there from that side. So this cinder will have to go in like that because the screw holes only line up one way. and we got it so just a little bit of a uh, finger trap got her pulled out so we had to cut it yeah this screen here it won't let it um, you know go through won't let it go through there so we're able to get that off um, I mean the tank is actually fairly clean looking down into it so honestly I don't think we're gonna put the screen back on there just because it's there's really no I mean I could try I could try and get this screen off of here it looks like they've melted it so what they did was they basically melted the um, they put the screen on there heated up the cinder and then smushed it in there looks like I cut myself somewhere fingering around down in that hole but 
We're gonna go ahead and cut our pickup. What we wanna do is cut it on a 45 angle to keep it um, off the bottom of the tank since we probably won't be using this screen. I'm gonna try and use the screen, but if I can't, then yeah, we'll just cut it at a 45 degree angle. We need to be the basically the same length as our other one was. So here's the length of our pickup. I think our leak is probably right here. Kinda of hard to see on the camera, but um, Right here around the base, there's a couple spots that looks like that is where our leak was coming from. Ooh, look at that. That just came out the cinder. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a problem. There we go. Now we can go ahead and stick this bad boy in the tank. I'm pretty sure that the tap is going to be a 5 8 by 18. Not 100% if this is the right one or not. It appears to be, so we're going to go and try and clean out the threads of the pickup with this. Fuel pickup that we got was just a 3 8 NPT by quarter inch NPT, 12 inch aluminum withdraw. Um, molar, part number's right there. That is a lot of junk that were in those threads. So I'll run this tap down one more time just to try and get anything else out and then we'll stick the uh, pickup down in there. And just like that, we've got our pickup in there. Now we need to stick our cinder in there. I just put some extreme grease on the threads of that pickup when I put it in. You know, I don't really like using Loctite or anything like that. The things seize up as it is, as you can see, trying to get the thing out. We're going to take some brake and contact cleaner in order to get some of the stuff that's in the holes where the bolts are going to go for the cinder so we can clean that up. Not the biggest fan of only using an O-ring on this plastic tank, but that is kind of how they all are so it seems to seal it pretty well if there is ever any kind of problem with this then we need to use something but nothing really sticks to the plastic so that's kind of the problem there but um, other than that you can use a stuff called gasola and that stuff does pretty well we use it on aluminum tanks but for plastic it's it's kind of a um, it's hard to get stuff to stick to plastic As I was talking about earlier, the wire's coming out a specific way. If you look, there's always like a hole or something on the gasket. You can see that hole there and that little nipple. This will always fit like this. And um, that will kind of give you a reference to show you where that gasket's supposed to sit. Now, all of our holes are going to line up because if you're off just a little bit, you can see the holes do not line up anymore. So very important to make sure you see that indicator and that you put that gasket on the way that it's supposed to go with the wire sticking out a certain way. So let's put our bolts in here and stick this thing down in the tank. The fuel sender was a 5.5 inch KUS fuel sender. Okay, so we've got our pickup in and we've got our sender in. We're looking all good, everything's done. Now, um, I'm not gonna hook up the sender for electrical right now just because there's been so much fuel and um, fumes in here that I wanna let it breathe before I get out anything to heat shrink these and connect these. So that'll all be fine, but at least we've got our pickup and our sender in and we are ready to move on to the next project.